anyway, I hope you had an amazing time, um, got to enjoy your friends and family and just all the blessings in life. Uh, you know me, I always like to start off with gratitude and I encourage you guys this year to start your own gratitude journal and just write down three things that you're thankful for every day. It is so good for the soul. Um, so I am thankful for all your support in 2021. I am really, really blessed to work with such an amazing team of agents. And so thank you for closed business with Miss Donna Hardy and Julie Bellinger and on their contract now with Miss Deborah Lang, Miss Liddy Hertz and Freddie Molson. And then of course, thank you for all the amazing referrals from Carmen Getz, Kim Cucklin, Glenda Smith and Richard Bogart. Once again, thank you guys from the bottom of my heart um, for your trust, for partnering with me to create more raving fans so I could get you even more referrals for the future. Um, thank you, FTGA, for taking care of my clients. And so, Justin, if you want to please put up the first slide. Okay, guys. So I'm sure you've heard that the Fed made the announcement last month. Um, even though Omicron is still an issue, um, they said, and that's the key word here, that they said that they're going to increase the rates three times this year by a quarter point once in March, once in June, and another time in November. So uh, let's see what happens. It's like watching scary movie. Um, so Justin, could you put the next slide up, please? Thank you. So, but let's look at this chart, right? We wanna keep the right perspective that even if the rates were to go up an entire point, the rates are still at all time lows in comparison to the history of keeping track of interest rates, right? So, but we do want to keep reminding our buyers, hey, you know, we don't want them to pay more for that same house. So let's get them to buy sooner than later, right? Right. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, one more. Can we go one more? Okay, buyer's advantage. So I want to continue to beat the drum for this amazing program. Uh, once again, I'm going to get, you know, your buyers pre-approved so you could start shopping with a pre-approval letter right away, but I'm going to be working very hard in the background to, you know, get them through underwriting and get you a loan commitment because we know the loan commitment is going to be much stronger than a pre-approval letter, right? When there's 10 offers on the table. So, but we're going to even take it a step further because we got our $10,000 guarantee. Do you have that slide, Justin? Okay, we, yeah, the one before that. The one before, there we yes. go. Uh, no, the one you just had before, sorry. <laughs> That's the previous one, that one, sorry. Oh, it's taking me to the, I'm sorry. Yeah, the other way. I wanted to go, there you go. That's the one, right? Yeah, we could use that one. So basically you guys, we're going to, um, <coughs> We take your clients through the Buyer's Advantage program, right? And then we're gonna issue this $10,000 um, closing guarantee. So you could take this and actually submit it with your offer. So it's basically telling the listing agent and the seller, hey, you know, we're gonna give you $10,000 if this doesn't close. So we're putting our money where our mouth is. So this is going to help you win that bid. You know, I know it and, um, so if you have any questions about this, just feel free to call me after the meeting or, you know, I'll put my phone number in the chat, but you know, my goal is so that you win that bid and you get paid. Um, lastly, save the date for February 24th. I'm going to have a virtual lunch and learn. Um, I really, really wish we could do it in person. Um, but I guess we have to wait until all this craziness is over with. Um, but anyway, it's just going to be a quick half an hour. I'm going to go over some key points on mortgages. That's going to help you be even more knowledgeable in your business because my goal is to make you shine. Um, and that's it really for me. Uh, once again, I'm always here for you guys, your, uh, pre-approvals, the buyer's advantage, um, your random mortgage questions, your second opinions. Um, I hope you have an amazing 2022. So go get them rock stars. Thank you, Sherry. Thank hey, you so much. Hey, Come Sherry. On. Go ahead. We have a question. Sherry, Go ahead. Yeah, this is yeah, this is Hugh. Also with Prosperity Home Mortgage, I cover the Jupiter office. I just wanted to chime in with what Sherry said. Great Hi. stuff, Sherry. Thank you. 
Um, on the buyer's advantage program, one of the other great advantages is once you do it, not only does the seller get that $10,000 um, closing guarantee, the beauty of it is once you have that in place, you can close much faster as well. Um, I, you know, I, you could definitely close in two weeks uh, if you've got that. Hugh, <clears throat> if I, mean, I might interrupt you just for a moment. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I've got Robin Bundy on the call and she is chomping at the bit to sing your praises about something you did for her recently that nobody else could do. Robin, are you on? Because I oh, really want to hear that. Can, can y'all hear me? Sure can. Yes, we can. Fantastic. Hey, Eminem, what's up? <laughs> I call him Eminem because he's uh, the magic man. Um, you know, you always have that one crazy buyer. They think they know everything. And we started with Hugh on a bloody Saturday for a pre-approval. Hugh pulled it off. We got the offer accepted. Amazing. We're having a great party. Life is good. And then my buyer decides he wants to go with a different mortgage person. And then he flips back. And I'm telling you, talk about promise and deliver. I mean, I like did, it was a slam dunk. He pulled it off, sensational. Even to like two days before closing, we find out the buyer bought a car. Isn't that awesome? And he was still able to pull, uh, he, he promised and delivered. And I have just never been, I've never had that experience as long as I've been doing this. And I, totally want to buy him a new car because I can't repay him enough. Well, I need, I need a new car, Robin. <laughs> hey, that was so, great. Thank so, you, Robin. So I'm Thank all for that. Much. Except that it's, actually, it's actually illegal though, to do that. So. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Robin, you for much. sharing. Appreciate that. Thank you. That was fantastic. A little that more party in the house. <laughs> I am so over the moon. Thank you for the opportunity to give you um, some much gratitude and thankfulness from my heart. Now you're stuck with me, Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Yeah, but um, good stuff. Yeah, it won't go into details on that one. It'll it'll drive you crazy. But uh... <laughs> thank you, thank you, guys. And, and I got to tell you, um, um, uh, we the managing brokers, we see this happening all the time all the time, constantly. Prosperity steps in and saves a transaction that for all practical purposes, we thought that it was not possible to save. So this happens all the time. Thank you, thank you very much. And FTGA, just don't forget, the same thing happens all the time with FTGA. That's why absolutely, we collected yeah, them absolutely, as partners. All the time. And so FTGA, it's, uh, it, the floor is yours. Thank you, good morning, everybody. And good I love morning. your new nickname. Ah, uh, you. That's a good one. Um, I, I'm not sure. Is Cheryl on the call? And that's okay. I just wanted to check if she was going to chime in with me. But if not, um, if you will put me to the next slide, Justin, that would be great. Um, uh, what, first of all, I do want to say Happy New Year to everybody. And I just wish everybody a happy, healthy, and very prosperous New Year for everybody. So um, looking forward to this year. And uh, just a reminder again, for those of you who haven't um, tried this or would like to know that this is available to you, to, for escrow deposit checks, there's an app that you can have on your phone. So anytime you receive a check that we're holding the deposit on, you can just deposit it right there and then. You don't have to mail it, you don't have to drop it off, and it just makes it nice and quick. So just again, a reminder um, for that tool available to everybody. And the next slide, if you don't mind. I uh, wanted to remind everybody of the training that we have for January. Actually, there's one this morning, which I, you know, unless you count the tail end, that one's going to be pr pretty much over by the time we're done the meeting. That was on contracts and disclosures, but I'm sure you could still jump on if you want to after this meeting and catch, you know, at least a half an hour of it. And then we have one, which is a new one um, that I haven't seen before. That's going to be on the 20th of January, and that's going to be about endorsements to uh, title policies. So if you don't know what an endorsement is or what benefits they might be to your customers, that's a great class. It's, uh, and that'll go into the additional coverage you get on a policy with an endorsement. Um, so that's on the 20th at 11 o'clock. 
And then the last one for the month is going to be Encrypta. Great reminder for anybody who thinks they may be working with any foreign sellers um, and how that affects your transaction. That is always something to be um, kind of tuned in on because it does, you know, does definitely alter the dynamics of a transaction when you have a foreign seller. So those are the three for this month. And the next slide, which is our favorite part of the meeting, is our thank yous for your business. Um, for the Boca office, we want to give a shout out to, to Barbara Lauren, Liddy Hertz, Randy, Donna Hardy, Lisa, and Sherry. Thank you so much. This is on behalf of Cheryl, who, um, who is uh, not on the call. And then for the closed transaction for the Boca office, we have two with Jesse, Roxanne Lewis, Bob Weinhart, Linda, Cynthia, Donna Hardy again, and Marlene Ayton. So thank you guys so much from the Boca office. That was a great January. Um, Jupiter office. We had new contracts from Dewey, from Alyssa, and from Vincent. Thank you guys. Closed, we had with Lisa Kaplan. New contracts from Boynton. We had Jennifer Booker and George. And closed for two for the Wellmans. Um, that was January, and December was super busy. This month and next month are going to be also uh, super busy. Um, just been getting lots and lots of new contracts from all of the offices. So I want to just say thank you so much because I think we had a little lull over the holidays. And then as soon as that was over, everything, you know, started pouring back in. So thank you guys. Again, I'm here. Any questions, any um, quotes you guys need, please reach out to me um, for anything that I can assist you guys with. So have an awesome day. Thank quick, you quick so question. much, Kim. Sure. Outstanding. Thank you so much. Justin, sure, I think somebody had a question. Oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, um, Justin, I just had a quick question for Kim. Kim, mm -hmm. can we do seller net sheets on your app? You can. There's an, a separate app for FTGA net sheets. There's an oh. actual separate app for that. Yes, absolutely. Um, All right. We have two. And I'll, um, Maybe I'll next slide next month. I'll add that slide in to remind everybody what that app looks like. But yes, Good we have both apps Excellent. for deposits and one for net sheets. Brittany, it's all yours. Good morning, everyone. It's so fun to be on a joint call with everyone and see all your smiling faces in one place. So happy new year to everyone. Um, just a couple quick uh, points for this month's topic. If you wouldn't mind going to the next screen there. Justin, are you able to click to the next one? There we go. Oh. It was not responding. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so obviously last year and, and going into this year, we're seeing buyers going above what their budget was to get the offer accepted on their dream home, which leaves less funds uh, available in the event of a major system or appliance failure. So you can protect your buyers by providing, sorry, I have a sick baby home if you hear some background noise, um, but you can provide them peace of mind in knowing that they're covered in the event of, you know, a costly repair or replacement. Um, just to remind anybody who may not be familiar, we cover mechanical failures on plumbing, electric, appliances, cooling, and heating. We repair or replace. Um, and we work with pre-screened service technicians and we have 180 day workmanship guarantee on covered repairs. So that is pretty unique in the industry. Most other warranty companies only have a 30 day workmanship guarantee. So that's pretty huge, especially with air conditioning. I don't know about you guys, if you've ever had a repair done on AC, it seems like sometimes you just need them to come back a couple months later, you're having the same issue. So um, the homeowner doesn't have to submit a whole new claim. They can just reach out to us and have the service provider go back out under that same claim. So um, if you're ready to stand out from the crowd, go ahead and give me a call. Um, my phone number is 561-405-8375. My email is up on the screen. And I really hope to partner with you guys um, in the new year and help you guys grow your business. Thank you so much, Brittany. Thank you. Trish, I think you have a good story to tell us. Am I right? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, I can definitely share a full, a, a fabulous story with you. It is only 11 days into 2022. 
And one of our agents in Jupiter office, Kevin Dickinson, already has over $22.5 million of real estate under contract. This is not a coincidence. This is hard work. And I just wanted to share with you, this particular house is in Harbor Isles, a very upscale waterfront neighborhood in Palm Beach Gardens. He originally sold this property to Keyshawn Prince, who is an NBA all-star for the Pistons at one point. He bought this house for $3.1 million in 2014. Did a total gut, changed everything about the property. It's now under contract for $7.5 million. Now, this is interesting because Keyshawn didn't have Kevin as his buyer's agent. Uh, he had Kevin as the listing agent. The listing agent was the, another couple. Keyshawn was so impressed with Kevin that he is using Kevin now. So we're under contract with this property. Kevin also wrote for the same buyer a $15 million contract, which they ended up settling on for $14.50 million. And another one, on just under a million. So what I'm saying is he has done an extraordinary job, but this is how it happened. He's a Prima agent. He got a referral. The referral came in just kind of vague, maybe up to a million dollars. You never know who you're dealing with. This guy has over a hundred million dollars he wants to spend in real estate. So this is a fantastic way to have Prima really work for you um, to get engaged and stay uh, the course. Kevin does a lot of social media marketing. He's constantly going the extra mile and he listens more than he speaks. So I just wanted to share that with you. It's really exciting. This is gonna be a banner month for the Jupiter office, certainly a banner month for Kevin and it can happen to each and every one of you. If you stay the course, work the leads, and don't judge a book by its cover because you never know what you're gonna get. Outstanding, what a great story, what a great story. And, and I gotta say, knowing Kevin, I'm not surprised at all. And uh, if anyone on the call is interested to know more about the Prima program, please, you let Trish know, let Dan know, or let me know, we'll be happy to talk to you and send you the paper. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Trish. Thank you, Kevin. Well done. All right, Dan, I think you have someone to introduce. Uh, okay. Am I unmuted? You are unmuted. All right, super. Uh, just a couple of comments. First of all, good morning, everybody. I uh, want to thank you all, uh, sales professionals, partners, and guests for taking time to join us today. Looking forward to a great 2022 for everyone, looking forward to working with you all. Thank you to Justin and Trish for everything you do to help everybody in all our offices. Um, just a couple of things specific to Boynton Beach. As most of you probably know, we just moved to a new location. Everything went fantastic. Everybody loves our new spot. Uh, the exposure from the street is fantastic. Already started to have some people wander in, asking about real estate. So that's been really good for our sales professionals. Uh, thanks to Lori, Carol, uh, Lewis, and Sam for making it so smooth and really just a great effort all around. Um, specific to Boynton Beach this month, just a few birthdays, George Petrie. I'm gonna include Kim Fritchie in on that. Happy birthday this month. Our very own Linda Wellman from the fantastic Wellman team and Kathy Delando as a birthday later on this month. A uh, few anniversaries with BHHS Florida Realty. Jennifer Booker and Tara Verney on January 12th joined the same day. And John Deal is celebrating an anniversary with us uh, this month. Uh, now getting down to it, we do have Bart from Real Scout today, as Justin mentioned previously. Um, for those of you who have not uh, registered and signed up, I encourage you to do so. Uh, I've been in there. It's very easy to use. Uh, it's a great tool to set yourself apart from your competition. A lot of other brokerages do not have this tool as of yet. So I encourage you all to at least sign up, get familiar with it and start using it. I think you'll be very impressed. Um, helps you stay connected with your clients throughout the buying and selling process. 
uh, like I said, it's very easy to use and learn. If I can do it, you can all do it. <laughs> um, keeps you and your brand front and center. That's the main thing. Keeps everybody off realtor.com, Zoom and the rest and all the annoying ads that they see. Uh, if you need any help getting set up, let myself know. Trish or Justin will be happy to help you through that process. All that being said, I'll turn it over to Bart for the next 15 minutes or so. And I think you're gonna love what you hear. Thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate the introduction. And thank you, Trish. And thank you, Justin, for having me today. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I love what Sherry said about gratitude. I, I also have that same philosophy. Uh, first of all, I am grateful to live here in Florida uh, with you folks. I actually am in Sarasota over on the other coast but I'm right here in Florida with you. We have such beautiful weather and it's such a gorgeous place to live. So I'm grateful for that every day. I'm also grateful for our partnership with the HHS Florida Realty. I know that may sound kind of cheesy, but we, we do uh, appreciate you. And uh, we're excited to launch Real Scout at your company. As Dan said, it's, uh, it's a tool that you have access to that you should take advantage of. And I'm gonna show you why. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and to give you a little introduction to Real Scout today. Uh, and uh, let me know if you can see my screen. Everyone see that all right? Okay, yes, we cool. can. All right. Thank you, Justin. All right. So um, let me do more formally introduce myself. My name is Bart Marcioni, VP of Brokerage Relationships here at Real Scout. Uh, if you haven't heard about our company, it's we were founded in 2012 out in Silicon Valley in California you know, by real estate agents for real estate agents. Yeah, as a matter of fact, my background is I was an agent myself. I sold homes for 10 years in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I've been in your shoes. And I can relate, relate to all the joys and challenges of being an agent. There are many, right? Uh, but, but prior to helping start the company, uh, yeah, I, I actually sold homes. So we built Real Scout to bring some great technology to the real estate industry. So my role here at the company is to make sure that all of our new brokerage partners, like you folks, are set up and launched effectively. And I do a lot of the product training as well. But today, again, is a short introduction to the company. And if you haven't, again, heard about Real Scout, we're the leading company helping agents collaborate with their clients during the process of buying and selling homes. So we're rebuilding the way that you collaborate with them. First and foremost, we put together a safe haven for collaboration. You know, primarily, Real Scout is a search platform and a listing alert system that's designed to keep your buyers connected to you throughout the home shopping process. So it's a private platform. You invite them to come search with you. And when they do, they can look at homes based upon real MLS data. It's a very interactive platform. They can ask questions, provide feedback, and request showings. The whole time we keep you and your company brand front and center. There are no ads, no distractions, no other agents. Are right, you looking to steal your clients away? It's just about you and your clients shopping for their next home. Now, as they use the system, we keep track of what they're doing. So we can show you their behavior and their preferences. And you can use that information to help them find that perfect home faster. Now, one of the cool parts of the platform is that we gather up all the buyer activity, not just from your buyers, but from any buyer that's using the platform with their agent in the market. So we can reveal insights about the demand in the market. And you can use that information to win and sell more listings. Now, this is the part of the platform for working with sellers. There's some pretty cool features that I want to show you in a moment. But the whole system is designed to help you close more transactions, right? During the process of buying and selling. You know, and we did a survey recently and looked at agents who are transacting, right? We all know there are lots of agents that don't do any business at all. But for the ones that are transacting, the ones that used Real Scout, closed 54% more transactions by volume. Right, this is a survey we did in 2020 of, uh, of residential markets around the country. So real scout agents are more successful, you know, and we're getting a lot of accolades in the industry. You know, for example, uh, RIS Media named us the number one resource for agents looking for a leg up recently. You know, for perspective, DocuSign was number two on this list. <laughs> so real scout was number one. Pretty fantastic. And Tyler Thompson, a VP at NAR, says Real Scout's the Zoom of real estate. Right? We're there to help you stay connected to your clients. And lastly, Inman News named us a finalist in their uh, most innovative tech survey. So pretty cool accolades around the industry. And how are we doing that? Well, again, we're helping agents convert leads. So let's show you how Real Scout fits into your workflow. You know, and you, 
of course, looking at the real estate transaction funnel here, it looks like this. You know, at the top of the funnel, it's all about generating leads, right? That's when you're doing your marketing, your advertising, your website, you know, all your lead gen activities feed the funnel, right? And then the middle of the funnel, it's about capturing those people, engaging them and converting them into business. So that's when you're nurturing your sphere of influence and your leads and you're building relationships. At the bottom of the funnel, it's all about closing, right? Getting those deals through the finish line. Real Scout focuses on the middle of the funnel, folks. Okay, we're about helping you convert more leads and that, you're, that you're already generating at the top of the funnel. All right, so how do we do that? Well, let's talk about the ways. All right, so in terms of capturing leads into Real Scout, there's a couple of different ways to do it. We have lots of integrations to help you automate the leads coming into your Real Scout account. And then uh, secondary, uh, so it looks like this. So, you know, we have, we have integrations with Zillow, Realtor.com, right? That's where a lot of those consumers are, right? Because those sites spend millions of dollars driving traffic to their websites. And if you happen to generate leads to those sites, we can ingest them automatically and engage them uh, with our system. You know, you can uh, uh, publish searches on social media. We can connect to your CRM and other third-party technologies. The most common way that agents add the client to the system is to simply invite them. All right, so it's very easy. Right from your dashboard, you can enter their information, uh, what type of client they are, and add them that way. Very simple, okay? Just need to enter a few pieces of information. And boom, they're into your database. Now, once they're in the database, now we want to engage them. And there's two primary ways we do that. Listing alerts, typically for buyers, and market alerts for your sellers and your sphere of influence. Let's take a look at those mark. Uh, I'm sorry, those listing alerts, folks. Now, setting up a listing alert through Real Scout is simple. It's just like you would have normally done it through the MLS. So, think of Real Scout as the best alternative to the MLS to sending listings to your buyers. Now, setting up a search is just like you would have normally done. We have all the filters you need. Okay, status, right? property type, beds, baths, you know, characteristics like waterfront or anything that's important to your local area. And then when the system sends listing alerts to your clients, they're very engaging and they have this introduction that was automatically written, for example, uh, based upon what's important to your client. It points out interesting characteristics like the style of the home or features like in-law quarters, bonus rooms and formal dining room. OK, so it seems like it was written by you. And it, again, it highlights things that your client is interested in because they're personalized our email alerts get far better engagement rates than typical real estate emails, up to 17 times better. So you're gonna get great results by sending your clients listings from Real Scout as opposed to the MLS. And at the bottom of the email, they're branded to you and your company. And when the client clicks through, it takes them to an immersive search experience where they can explore these listings, okay? Again, there's no ads no distractions and no other agents. It's designed to look like those national search portals because that's what they're accustomed to, right? But the whole point is to give them an experience that's similar to Zillow, for example, but that's private to you and your clients, okay? It's very interactive and they can, they can as I said, uh, point out uh, or specify things that they're interested in, like the kitchen and the fact that it has a view, all right? And even specific features of the home, like whether the uh, house is near something like um, Whole Foods or the beach, things like that. And again, we personalize their experience using these characteristics. They can even put in their commute locations and we can calculate how long it'll take to get from these homes to their favorite locations, like their kid's school or their work address or the airport. Okay, making it very relevant specifically to them. Now, one of the cool ways that we pioneered uh, to make it a great experience searching for these properties is to uh, is what we've done with the photography. So now our system uses artificial intelligence to automatically categorize the rooms of these homes. So you notice at the top of the screen there, if the client wants a picture uh, to see the pictures of the kitchen, they just click on kitchen. <laughs> Isn't that cool? And scroll through the different kitchen shots or see what the bathrooms are like, or the bedrooms or the outside shots. Really cool way to explore these homes. It's uh, some technology we developed called computer vision. We use that same technology to power our compare feature. A client can look at the three homes side by side, and as they scroll down, they can see all the kitchens side by side, all the living rooms and bathrooms and bedrooms and outside shots. 
And it's a very visually engaging way, an intuitive way to experience these homes and find that perfect property for them. Now, of course, they can look at homes on a map just like they would on any other real estate search site. Okay, they can put in some criteria here and look at um, all these properties and explore them based on a city, a zip code, a neighborhood, even by a school boundary. Yeah, they can see if a home might go to a particular school and set up a listing alert for those homes. Pretty cool. So that's all part of the platform for working with buyers. Now let's talk about the market alerts for working with sellers or potential sellers. So using this feature, you can put in a specific area based upon zip code, neighborhood, or even draw on a map and set up this market activity alert to keep your client up to date with what the demand is like in the area. So we can send it on a, a monthly basis or every couple of weeks, for example. And when the client gets the email alert, it's gonna say, hey, here's your latest market activity report. And they can click the blue button to see the demand in the marketplace. Now, this is a really interesting way to look at the market. Historically, as agents, we like to send reports based upon the supply, don't we, right? Inventory, comps, list to sales price ratios, that type of thing. Real Scouts reports are highlighting the buyer activity in a particular area. So around this report, you can see the number of active buyers searching in this geographic area. So this case, 8,895 buyers. And right below, you can see how active they are on the platform. Boy, they've interacted with listings over 230,000 times, almost a quarter of a million interactions. So this is the data that's coming from Real Scout. So in your area, there might be more or might, might be less buyers, but it's, it's looking at the buyer activity data, okay? Not all the buyers in the marketplace, but the ones on Real Scout searching. So as your agents, right, at your company and other companies in the area add their buyers, this data will be very useful and valuable. And the whole idea behind this report is for the client to interact with you about it and ask you, boy, wow, the market looks pretty hot. Let's talk about the market. Come over and talk to me about maybe about listing my home. All right, and that's going to lead to listing appointments. That's the whole point behind this feature here. Okay, and so let's talk about converting these leads now that they're in the system and getting these listing and market alerts. There's two ways to do that. Our agent dashboard is going to allow you to get an overview of everything going on in your account, see what the clients are doing, whether they're getting more active on the system or less. And uh, you know, you'll see a, a summary at the top of the screen, how many active clients you have. In the center of the screen, it's a live feed showing whether clients have opened your email or if they like a property or dislike a property or a request of showing. All the messages and the shown re requests are here on the right side of the screen. So it's showing you um, the increase in client activity so you can convert these leads at a greater rate. So when they start getting more active, you can reach out to them, right? Look for those conversion moments. All right, so that's what happens here. Now, you don't need to come to the dashboard every day. If you have our mobile app, we'll send you a notification if the client wants to see a home or has a question. And you can easily respond to them right from the Real Scout mobile app, okay? So that's the agent dashboard. You all have access to that. So you can start using that right away. And uh, let's talk about some of the seller features for converting uh, these leads. Okay. So there's a bunch of listing tools to help you do that. And the first feature here is to enhance listing presentations. You know, when you uh, are going out to uh, talk to a potential seller about listing their home, you can use Real Scout data to, uh, to show what the demand might be like for that property. So let's say you're going on a listing appointment this weekend at 613 South Clover Avenue. It's a single family home. You can put in some basic details and a target price based upon what you know about the comps in the area. And you can generate a report to see what the demand is like for a home just like that. So um, this chart here is showing me where the buyers are searching in different price ranges. So the dark blue bar in the middle shows me that at a target price of 1.669 million, there are currently 482 buyers that would match. But if we were to lower the price by just 5%, we would attract 23% more buyers. Holy cow. So this is pretty amazing. So you can use this information to help the seller dial in the perfect price for their listing. And you can print this report out as a PDF and bring this buyer demand report with you on your next listing appointment to show them how many buyers would match. Pretty cool. Now, again, this is a demand report. Now, of course, you're going to go with a CMA, and that's showing the supply side. With this demand report, you have a more complete view of the marketplace. 
It's really going to help you stand out from the crowd and win that listing. And when you have a new listing and it's on the MLS, again, you can use Real Scout to sell it more effectively here. Under listing tools, you can see your active listings and you can get analytics about how it's performing and do reverse prospecting. So if I click analytics, I can see on this listing detail pop-up what's been happening with my listing. Like how many times it's been viewed, by how many specific buyers and how those listing views have changed over time. And I can also see a chart showing me all the different prices that the buyers are searching in. You know, if your listing wasn't selling as fast as you had hoped, well, maybe you could use this information to get a price reduction and show your seller how many more buyers would match if they lower the price. Pretty cool. Great data-driven information. Now, you might be wondering, how do I get access to all those buyers that match my listing? Well, you can use reverse prospecting to see all the agents at the different brokerages in your marketplace that have buyers who match your listing, whether the buyers have viewed your property or if they're interested in it. And if you see a buyer is interested, you can click on message the agent to send them a quick note and say, wow, it looks like you have a buyer who's interested in my listing. I'd love to work with you. Would you like to schedule a showing? So the point is, is to create thoughtful connections between listing agents and buyer's agents to get your listing sold more effectively. So those are the two ways that you can use Real Scout to convert your leads. Okay, a couple of questions have come up here about Real Scout in terms of the MLS uh, that we have access to. So Real Scout is a third party vendor of the MLS. We're only allowed to show MLS data in your account for the MLSs that you're a member of. So in South Florida, where you folks are all uh, active, uh, we have the, uh, the, all the different MLSs combined into one. So that includes Fort Lauderdale, Beaches, Miami. Okay, they're all combined into one big MLS there in the Real Scout system. So you can search for properties up and down the Southeast coast there. Okay, so you should have access to those in your system. So what's next? Well, you know, activate the account that you have ready. You know, BHHS Florida Realty provides this account for you for free. You might as well give it a try. We have sent out a message to you about, I don't know, I guess it was just around Thanksgiving time. So you should have seen an email that said, welcome to Real Scout. Now, if you didn't get it, you can check with Dan, Trish, or Justin, and they can resend your welcome email to you so you can activate your account. And it's a very easy process. All you do is just basically pick a password, upload your photo, and then boom, you're into your dashboard. Very easy, okay? So we want to um, you know, have you give it a try, add a couple of leads, a couple of prospects, a couple of buyers, and see how it works. Right? The more buyers that are in the system, the more demand data that's in there, the more useful and valuable it will be for everybody. All right, I do see another question has come up. Uh, Casey asks, is the de data dependent on agent participation? And uh, it's really dependent on agent and client participation. Absolutely, yes. So we don't take any information from the MLS. It's about the data that's in Real Scout. So the first order of business here, folks, is for you to add your buyers. Set up, your, set up your account, add some leads, prospects, open house <laughs> visitors, uh, and set them up with searches. Think of Real Scout as the best alternative to sending listings rather than the MLS, okay? It's gonna be a better experience. I showed you how the clients can interact with the system more you know, interactive uh, and, and uh, intuitive than the MLS is for sure. So get your buyers in there and then the, this uh, system will be valuable for everybody. Any other questions? Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, Bart. Hi, Trish. This is Trish. Um, my quick question is a lot of people like to go to Zillow and Realtor.com to search. And we That's all right. know that, that that information, the status changes are not updated accurately, just if they're new or not. Um, right. So a lot of times they'll call on a property and we waste our time because it's been under contract or it's already closed. This is real time data, correct? So that any status change is effectively picked up because you are correct, you're, you're intimately connected to the IDX. Is that correct? You're absolutely right, Trish. Real Scout uh, does have a direct connection to the MLS and it's updated about every five to 10 minutes. So this so is- So that's why it's so important because yeah. you want to engage your, your buyers and your sellers even to really use this tool, but especially your buyers to use this tool so they, they get real time MLS data and they're, they're shot at picking a house, seeing a house and getting a first offer in is so much higher than that if they looked on Zillow or realtor.com. So this is an excellent tool. 
Thank you, Trish. And the best part from your perspective is that they're not exposed to other agents. What is Zillow for? Who can tell me what Zillow is for? It's not for searching for homes. Lead generation for Zillow. It's for leads. <laughs> it's a lead generation platform for agents. So when your client's out shopping on Zillow, they're being poached by other agents, right? And you have no idea if they're talking to other agents, if other agents are calling them, you know, trying to get them to work with them rather than you. It's a horrible situation. So Real Scout is a private, safe environment where you and your buyers can search for their next home without those ads, without those agents hounding your clients. So put them into Real Scout. It's going to be a great experience and it's going to be better than the MLS. Okay. So rather <laughs> than putting your clients in the MLS, you're going to have a much better experience. So I hope that was helpful. Okay. We're here to help you. I know we have a whole support team that's standing by to help you get success with our platform. So once you activate your account, if you have questions, you know, right on your dashboard, there's a link for support. If you need assistance, we're here to help. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Bart. Bart. Um, that was great. Yeah. Right. Just, um, one more comment, throwing my two cents, because I've been doing a lot with this, training myself on it. For those of you who haven't tried it, it really is fun to use and fun to learn. So again, I can't recommend enough giving it a shot. Um, practice on yourself, on your own neighborhood. But yeah. before you send it to clients, get used to it. Um, I think you really enjoy it. And it's, it's definitely going to help your business. So thanks again, Bart. All right. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me, folks. Have a great Thank day. You, Take Bart, care. If you could Bart. just give me back the controls, make me the host oh, again. Sorry. Sorry. I have a question, Bart. Oh, yes, Linda, go. Hi. I try. I just text you. Um, I have tried to use Real Scout, but I can't access the West Coast properties. And I've got two clients right now that want the West Coast. Is that possible to get access to over there on the, not just the East Coast? Yeah, unfortunately, no, Linda, because as I mentioned earlier, Real Scout um, can only show data for the MLSs that you're a member of. So we're like an IDX system. You know, we, we can't show data from the West Coast of Florida or any other part of the country for that matter. It's only for the MLSs you're a member of. So I apologize about that. In that case, maybe you can get a, a referral fee for referring that client to another uh, office over here. Well, right now I use MLS Advantage, but it's really, it's really a, a long tedious process so i was just hoping that this was going to be an alternate yeah i wish we could linda and, and you know in the future maybe if the florida mls has come up with a larger reciprocity across the state that might be the case but unfortunately no okay thank you thank you uh, i have a question um i got an email from andrea from real scout is this the one that i should be answering to Yes, Andrea is our director of customer service, and she has oh, sent okay. you all some reminders. Andrea, is, she introduced herself to everybody recently, so if you got an email from her, go ahead and activate your account using that email too. But if you, get, if you can't find it, just check with uh, Dan, Trish, or Justin, and they can resend your welcome email, okay? Oh, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thanks, folks. Let me get the uh, host back here, Justin. Let me see. Yeah, you go, you go back to participants, find my name, and then to the right, you have an option. There you go. All right. Back to you. Outstanding. Thank Thanks, you folks. so much. It was a great presentation. An amazing job concentrating on all that information in just 20 minutes. So amazing. I'm impressed. You're welcome. My, my pleasure. <laughs> Have a great day, folks. Bye-bye. Bye, Bart. Have a great day. All right. So we are going to talk a little bit about copyright. And... Uh, I don't know why this screen is blank. It should not be, but it is. Anyway, that was just the intro uh, screen. You know why we're going, ah, there you go. That's why it's blank. So isn't this cool? This is a very old ad. I think this ad is from 1912. And, and I thought it was a very cool way to intro the uh, uh, copyright subjects. So why are we going to talk about copyright? We're going to talk about copyright because Sometimes we don't realize that images have copyright too, right? And specifically images that can be used for the MLS. So copyright, it's intellectual property, private property, yeah? If I walk into your house and I grab your stereo and I take it to my house, yeah, that's a problem, right? <laughs> because it's yours, it's your private property. So it's the same thing with, uh, uh, with intellectual property. And um, when uh, we use a picture for the MLS that we have not taken ourselves, option number one, 
I took the picture myself or that we have paid for, I'm gonna pay Mr. Photographer and Mr. Photographer is gonna give me a signed contract with terms. I'm gonna use the picture unless we have one of those two situations, then we can have a number of legal problems and those problems can be very significant. Now, I wanna clarify a couple of things. One, if you took the picture yourself, no ifs, no buts, no nuances, no room for interpretation. You took the picture with your phone or with your camera yourself. In that case, you're good. You can use the picture, put it on the MLS. And I'm gonna go back to that a little bit to clarify a little nuance of that. The second one, when you hire a photographer, a professional photographer, uh, not only you want to have an agreement, sign agreement, also you want to find out whether the picture that the photographer took for you is for a single use to upload in one listing or if it's yours till the end of time because if the agreement is for a single use and then you have another listing for the same complex the same property and you want to use the picture again then you're violating the copyright agreement that you have with the photographer now the other nuance that i want to clarify it is this by the terms of your agreement and you have an agreement with the MLS. You may remember this or not, but the very first time that you join uh, the realtor association that you belong to now, um, you sign, yes, I agree to follow these rules and whatnot. And by the terms of your agreement, the agreement states that when you put a picture on the MLS, you're surrendering immediately rights to that picture to the MLS. So going back to one of your own listings, taking one of those pictures and reusing the picture, it's a problem because that also, it's, uh, uh, that also is by the terms of MLS rules and regulations. Yes, I'm not saying that the association is gonna go after you, but you need to understand that by the terms of the MLS rules and regulations, that is also a violation. Bottom line, just remember this. You took the picture yourself with your phone or with your camera, you're good to go, use the picture. You pay someone to take the picture, then understand the terms of your agreement, understand them well. You know, this happened to you. I know this happened to you at least a few dozen times. A customer, a buyer and a seller come to you and tell you, oh, I didn't know that, blah, blah, blah. And it's stated on the contract. And you're like, oh my God, you didn't read the agreement. You don't want to be that person. You don't want to be the person that did not read the agreement. So when you have an agreement with a photographer, read it, understand it. And otherwise, take the pictures yourself and you'll be good. The consequences for breaking copyright can be very, very serious. Um, you know, if I decide to start my own car company and I want to call it Lexus, I'm going to have a problem because Lexus it's a copyrighted brand, right? It's exactly the same thing. It's just a series. So be very, very cautious with what you do on the MLS. And one last clarification. When your buddy from Mom and Pop Realty sends you a text message telling you, yeah, sure, go crazy, use my own pictures, that does not constitute a legal authorization to use images. So again, remember, you took the pictures yourself or you have a legal agreement with a photographer to use those pictures. If you have any questions about that, we are no lawyers, but we will try to help you as much as possible. But uh, on the email that you received with the link for this uh, office meeting, you have a link to a very good NAR page uh, explaining copyright, okay? If you have any questions about this, put them on the chat box or send them by email. We will address them after the meeting. Hey, Justin, Next. really quick. I yes. just wanted to add to that, that not that does not just include taking pictures of homes that were already on the MLS. Anything on the internet, we've got a local aerial photographer here called Captain Chemo, takes some of the most beautiful aerial photographs of Jupiter Lighthouse, this and that. Those are all trademarked as well. So yeah. if there are agents that are seeing these pictures on the internet and thinking they're free and using them in their personal marketing, that's also making yourself liable to a lawsuit. So yeah. just be very careful with the photographs you use, no matter whether they're an MLS or your personal marketing. And, and the, the lawsuits can be brutal, absolutely brutal. This is not like, okay, be 500 bucks and we're good. No, it can be absolutely brutal. And uh, um, don't think 
that in order to find out they're using a picture, they need to actually see the listing. There is software that will look for copyrighted material and is sorting through tens of thousands of images a second. So if something is out there on, on the internet and anything that you put on the MLS will be on the internet because we feed them to public sites, it will be found, it will be found. So don't think that somebody needs to stumble upon the picture by coincidence. There are firms that use software to find copyright violations and they use software that sorts to tens of thousands of pictures per second, okay? Now we go into everyone's favorite part, Justin, which is the essential, Justin. oh yes, go ahead, go ahead. Excuse me one second. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Carol Hill coming to you, Northeast Region Vice President. Great to see everyone's participation this morning. Just a quick reminder that we do have community photos that cover a plethora of areas for Palm Beach County available to you on our intranet site. So be sure and use that as one of your many resources that you have. Um, there are a couple of questions in chat, which I think it's important to address these. Robin from Jupiter wants to know what about broker advertisement? And Harold and Linda are talking about what if someone advertises my listing on a Facebook page? As long as they do the advertising and the way that is provided by all companies is perfectly fine. Well, all they are doing is displaying the data that we have on the MLS. If somebody puts something together, I came across a situation recently, someone was advertising one of our listings as being their own listing is a different deal altogether. But if they're using, for example, when you go to marketing resource and you share a listing, or when you go to your own Prima website and you share a listing, all of that is already done in a way that is perfectly legal, okay? Broker advertising, exactly the same thing. If it's done with the tools that are provided by the brokerages, it's fine because all they're doing is pulling the data that we created on the MLS and displaying it in different websites with the proper disclaimers and with the proper accreditation. At the bottom, we will say courtesy of Berkshire Hathaway and whatnot. And let me see, I think I have another two questions right here. I watermark most of my pictures. That is fine, but that really doesn't do anything at all about copyright. It, it, it really doesn't. It doesn't help you. It doesn't protect you from a copyright violation. And it does not make the picture um, less susceptible to being stolen. Uh, so it is a good idea. It's fantastic, but it really doesn't influence um, if you're using a picture that you don't have legal rights to do it, even whether you copyright it, whether you watermark it or not, makes no difference. And uh, Linda was asking the same question about the uh, advertising. And uh, yeah, copyright infringement is not covered by the insurance. Yeah. And the same thing, if somebody sends a mailer with your sole property, it has to have the proper disclaimer, courtesy of such and such. And of course, the listing has to say on the MLS, okay to advertise. If that's the case, then it's fine. If that's not the case, reach out to your managing broker, Trish, Dan, or me, and we'll proceed. Any other questions about that? I, I do. I just want to clarify that the broker advertisement, I was told if it said yes, as long as we have the verbiage courtesy of then we're, we're good, correct? And that is added automatically for all the systems that are provided by brokerages, by the marketing systems that we provide and all the other brokerages. All those disclaimers, including the fair housing, including the, if you're working with another realtor, please disregard, all of that is included in those systems. So if you come across an advertising for your listing or an office listing, um, take a look. And if you see that there's something that you don't like, you let us know immediately, okay? <clears throat> All right, we're moving on to the essential reminders. And I'm gonna repeat the same thing that I always say. These are essential because they are essential. When we forget about these things, then um, our admins, Vivian, Lori, Tracy, they have to stop what they're doing. And sometimes they have to invest hours to get back in track. Very important. So please pay, pay, pay close attention. Essential reminder, number one, if PowerPoint behaves, there you go. The required documents are required, not optional. No, I really didn't feel like it. What happens is my seller told me not to do this. They're required. We cannot proceed with the transaction if we don't have 
every single one of the documents that we have marked as required. So if at some point you encounter a situation in which one of your customers tells you, absolutely not, I'm not going to sign this paper, then you let us know. Let us know immediately because we need to resolve it one way or the other. Required documents are required, not optional, okay? Next. If you happen to be out of town, first, kudos, awesome. Everyone should take time to clear their head, enjoy and whatnot. But if you are out of town, is anyone covering for you? Did you let us know? Um, do you have an ongoing transaction that you may need help with? Um, just think about it. When you're gonna be out of town, let us know and make sure that someone is covering for you. And if you don't have someone to cover for you, anyway, let us know and we will help you to, uh, um, uh, to cover your transactions while you're out of town. And another thing, if you're planning to leave town and you, I mean, when you are in vacation, probably you're not carrying your computer with you or whatnot, or maybe you're gonna be VC, make sure that your listings are updated, okay? So if you left a listing on pending sale, but actually listing closed, make sure that you close it. And we're gonna revisit updates on the MLS in a few seconds. Deposits, your first option, and your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth, all of the options would be wire transfer. Okay, wire transfer should be 99% of all the deposits. If a wire transfer is a complete and absolute impossibility for whatever reason, then the next option should be a cashier's check. Personal checks should never be accepted. Why? Not because they're not good, but because they come with a mandatory 10 day waiting period. And that 10 day waiting period can wreck a transaction. Trust me, I have seen that over and over. And you know what? If the check, if the personal check happens to be from out of state, then the 10 days turn into 20. And you know what we can do about that? Absolutely nothing. These are all federal regulations. So personal checks, avoid them like the plague. Don't touch them. Wire transfers, and FTGA made the wire transfer super easy. They have an application now that your customer can install on their phone. Super easy to do. And of course, our admins are available to help with wire instructions. If that is not possible, then a cashier's check, okay? Remember, we have no way to accelerate this process. We have no way to do it. I cannot call Carol and tell Carol, hey, Carol, can you validate a personal check that I got five minutes ago? Can't do it. I cannot call Ray. I cannot call Warren and ask him, hey, can you accelerate this? He cannot do it. It's federal regulations, okay? So avoid personal checks, please. Tracy, Lori, Vivian, and us. We will thank you so much. Next reminder, check your profiles. I know that we have a gazillion and a half profiles. I know. And I know it's very difficult to keep up. Trust me, I counted my profiles. All the profiles I have to do with work, and believe it or not, it's more than 300. <laughs> so I know it's difficult, but sometimes you'll find out they have a profile in which you still have some the name of another company or something that is not completely professional uh, or you have a very outdated picture or you have a link that doesn't work anymore. So go through the hierarchy of the profiles, the most important profiles, the email signature, then the resource center, marketing resource, the MLS, uh, for simplicity, realtor.com, your Facebook business page, make sure that your information is correct. Okay, very important because sometimes I get a, an email or a text message from uh, one of our colleagues and uh, I know that this person is in such and such office and I'm getting an email signature that says, hey, I am in mom and pop realty in Colorado. Yeah, update your profiles. Hey, Next. Jess. Yes, go ahead. Justin, very, very quickly. Um, also, a lot of us have changed office addresses lately please be sure that you go back out to DPBR. You have 10 days to correct and have your updated address in your DPR account. And that's the one that we cannot forget. You're gonna miss pertinent information like, when does my license renew? Yeah, uh, th this is a very good tip. Thank you, Carol. Very, very important. Also, DPR has a deadline for you to update. And once you pass the deadline, you're in violation. Okay, DPR makes it very clear. If you fail to update your address, um, you will be in violation. I believe it's a very short period of time. Don't quote me on this, but I think it's less than two weeks, okay? Referrals, same thing on the email that I sent uh, and Trish and Dan, you have a whole list of different links. 
you have the link for referrals. To submit a referral is super easy. You just click on that link, you enter the information, Monica or Adrian from the referral department will contact you, but that's the easiest way to do a referral. Um, if you do it that way, the referral starts the right way. If you happen to get a referral from another company, from, an, from a colleague, and your colleague signed it and you signed it, the referral is still not valid. It has to be signed by brokers on both ends, okay? Best way to do it, through the link, but you have no control which, over what you receive. So if somebody sends you by email a referral agreement, awesome, good for you, but make sure that it is signed by the broker on the other end and make sure that you give it to your broker to be signed. Otherwise, the referral agreement is not valid. Next, MLS rules. Um, the MLS information on your listing has to reflect precisely the actual reality of the transaction. So I'm going to clarify a couple of things. Active not only means that you're accepting offers. Active only, also means, and this is very important, that you are able to show the listing either virtually or in person, but that you're able to show the listing with no more than 48 hours notice. This is in most MLSs, in some MLSs it's actually 24. So that's what active means. It's not only I am accepting offers, it also means I can show this property with no more than 48 hours notice. Active with contract means the same and also means that you're accepting backup contracts, backup offers. Okay, that's what active with contract means. Pending means, sorry guys, I cannot show the property and I cannot accept any more offers because the seller has accepted an offer and we are in the process of validating that and getting to the closing. Withdrawn, this is not widely known, but it should be. Withdrawn means that you, the agent and the brokerage, reserve all the rights on the listing we are not going to cancel this listing, yes? But we have some sort of a situation that prevents us from either submitting offers to the, uh, to the seller, uh, showing the property. Usually this happens when a seller says, oh, I changed my mind, I don't wanna sell anymore. And you're in, you already invested two months and you invested a very significant amount of time and money and tell them, well, then we need to negotiate a cancellation. And the seller tells you, nope, I'm not paying you anything. I'm canceling the listing. Well, no, Mr. Seller, you cannot cancel the listing unilaterally. I'm not talking to you anymore, okay? That's when you put the listing or withdrawn, okay? Temporarily off the market, completely different, means you cannot show the property for a short period of time. Let's imagine, for example, the property has been tented for pest control. Uh, the property has been cleaned, painted. Um, the roof has been fixed, right? That is when you put the listing on temporarily off the market. You can still receive offers and present the offers to the seller. You can still negotiate, but you cannot show the property within 48 hours. If you have to wait three, four, five days, six months, that's when you put it in temporarily off the market. I hope this was helpful and I hope this helps all of you to keep the MLS to preserve the integrity of our MLS database. The status of the MLS has to change immediately upon execution. You know what that means. When all the signatures, all the initials, and all the dates are on paper, your next step is go to the MLS and change the status. No contact information on public remarks. When you put contact information on public remarks, the public will see it. So, you know, when you create an auto notification, an automatic notification for listings, I call you and tell you, hey, I want, to buy a, I want to buy a house, four bedrooms, three bedrooms, secret submarine base. Awesome, Justin. I'm going to create an automatic search for you. And then I begin to get those results automatically. And lo and behold, one of the listings says, hey, call Jimmy from blah, 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 Realty. And maybe I don't know. Maybe I call Jimmy from blah, 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 Realty. And now you're out of the picture. That would be very upsetting. Well, this is exactly what happens when you put contact information on the public remarks. You can put public information on the broker remarks because that is only reserved to your colleagues, other MLS participants. And uh, 
all realtor associations in the state of Florida are assessing fines because the increase of violations in the frenzy of the buyer's market, it's, I don't know what it's like, it's like 10 times more than what it was two years ago. So they are assessing fines. And for all realtor associations, the fines are progressive. First, you get one. The second one is substantially more serious. And by the third one, you may even get your MLS access suspended. Be very mindful of these details. Next one, you know the coming soon status? We do not use it ever under any circumstances. Yeah, but my seller told me to, we don't use it. Yeah, but my auntie's a realtor in New Jersey. No, we don't use it, but I really like it. We don't use it. If you want a more detailed explanation, let me know, give me a call and I tell you the reasons behind it, but we do not use the coming soon status ever. Next one. I know that sometimes we have to surrender control of title. Do we like it? No, we don't like it at all. But sometimes in order to save the transaction, we have to tell our cooperating broker, okay, fine, you guys do title, right? When that happens, there is an extra burden of responsibility on you, okay? Because Tracy doesn't know, Lori doesn't know, Vivian, Jessica, they don't know. Trish, Dan, and me, we don't know who this title company is. We don't know the contact information. We don't know the closing date. So first, you need to let us know immediately. And if anything changes, you need to let us know. You have to make sure that when all the parties send the ALTA statement a few days before closing, that we get a copy of that. We have to make sure, you have to make sure that the closing agent charges the 395 additional brokerage fee and keep us updated on any changes. And you have to get in touch with the closing agent often and ask them, do you need anything? Do we have all the documentation? Is there anything missing? Can I help you with anything? Because not everyone has the standards that FTGA deploys. Sometimes you have title companies that will get to the closing table and I'm telling you true stories, okay? I'm not making this up with the wrong name for the seller or the wrong name for the buyer or the wrong amount for the commission or the wrong amount for the purchase or they just forget that they need to pay commission. Yes, you have to be on top of that when we surrender control of title. On the other hand, when FTGA does the title work, you can go take a nap. You have to worry about any of this, okay? Next one, there is a search of fraudulent sellers false sellers in the state of Florida, particularly, uh, specifically a lot of vacant land, agricultural land, but they're trying what other types of property. So when you get a potential lead, somebody calls you, sends you an email, you meet them at a bar, whatever it is, and they tell you, I want to sell XYZ property. Do you do, do the research that you need to do to find out that this person is who they claim to be and that they own the property that they claim to own, okay? Very important. There is a search of fraud, and many of these guys are real good. They're pros. They're professional criminals. They're professional scammers. They are not going to start sweating and trembling and confessing the moment that you ask him, are you really this person? So you have to do the research. Be very mindful of this, okay? And the same thing, when you somebody calls you on the phone and say, oh, I'm such and such, such and such realty, Find out if they really are an active licensee. It wouldn't be the first time that somebody claims to be a realtor and they don't have a license at all, okay? Important. Now, I have a treat for you guys. This is really cool. Um, I don't know about you guys in Jupiter, unless you don't mind the drive. It should be about a, I don't know, 30 minute drive or so. But Boynton Beach and Boca Raton, Spenga, which is a really cool gym that has instructor led classes is offering a group of up to 25. So this is first come first served. Okay. First come first served a free session. These sessions are instructor led. They, they, uh, uh, they are 20 minutes of spin, 20 minutes of strength and 20 minutes of yoga. The place is amazing. It's pristine. I went there myself. I didn't want to tell you about this before I tested it. And guess what? The owner of Spenga is Tommy, and he's with us. He's one of our agents. He's with the Gainesville office, and he's transferring now to South Florida. 
um, he's going to give us a free session Sunday, this coming Sunday at noon, but you have to be there at 11.30 a.m. On the email that you got with all the links, you have all the information of Aspenga, but I need you to send an email, send me an email saying, yes, I want to participate because we have only 25 slots, okay, 25 slots. So um, again, it's gonna be at the Spenga in Boca Raton, which is on the corner of Military Trail and Clint Moore uh, on Sunday. You wanna be there at 11.30 in the morning and the class is going to start at 12. And trust me, I did it. And uh, um, my legs are still wobbly and I did it last Saturday. So very good workout and a fun thing to do. You have to do, show up. 11.30, sign up, no commitment. You just sign that you're there. You sign a little disclaimer and enjoy the class. First come, first serve. If I get more than 25 participants, which is very likely, Tommy promised me that he will consider doing a second session, okay? So send me an email if you want to participate. And that is the end of the presentation, my friends. If you have any questions, any comments, this is the time. Justin, it's Carol. Thank Hi, you Carol. for being an excellent moderator this morning. And Dan, thank you. And Trish, we appreciate all your efforts. And before we close out the meeting, I just wanted to recognize all the efforts of each one of you who are on this meeting this morning. 2021 was a banner year. That There's no other way to put it. You all really stepped up to the plate. You did a fantastic job. Your buyers, your sellers, we read the testimonials. We love seeing the testimonials, so be sure and share those with us. Sherry Gunther and Hugh and Kim and Cheryl, y'all are knocking it out of the park as our business partners, along with uh, Brittany from Cinch. But I do want to give a special recognition to our managing brokers, Justin and Dan and Trish. You guys are in the trenches every day. We so appreciate you. But the real unsung heroes, and I think you all will agree with me, are our branch office administrators. So let's give a big shout out to Vivian and Jessica in Boca, Lori in Boynton Beach in Wellington, and Tracy in Jupiter. There's, oh, wow. <laughs> there is no way <laughs> any of us could do what we do every day without the support uh, and the compassion and the good humor of those four ladies. So thank you all very much. Have an awesome, awesome day. And thanks for being with us this morning.